friends, it's Nomad Brad coming to you from my box truck. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you guys through a 24 volt electrical system. This is one that I put together last week on a shuttle bus for a client. So I really believe a 24 volt electrical system is kind of the new standard in vehicle dwelling. It just makes sense when you go with 24 volts instead of 12 volts. Um, you can use a lot smaller power cable and additionally it's more efficient when you're running the inverter to go from 24 volts DC to 110 volts AC rather than going from 12 volts to 110. And since we are going to be using an all-in-one inverter charger, it also just makes the system that much more affordable and simple to install. So let's hop into the video and I hope this helps you guys out with any of your questions when you're doing your own electrical systems in your vans or your shuttle bus or your box truck. Let's go. This is the vehicle we're working on for today's install. It is a 2000 Ford E450 Econoline shuttle bus. Right now it's pretty much a blank canvas. Now the client did already purchase four of these 12.8 volt, 280 amp hour eco-worthy batteries. So these 12 volt batteries are gonna be wired into a 24 volt battery bank. And so it's really important that before you connect all the batteries together, you make sure each battery is fully charged and that will just help make sure that they charge and discharge evenly across the entire battery bank. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is run you through all the different components within this setup. Uh, the first thing you'll note is up at the top, we have all the batteries. Now everything's getting mounted down to this piece of wood, so it's gonna just kind of float loosely throughout the install. Um, but once the install is complete, then the piece of wood will be permanently mounted up against the wall. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have four 12.8 volt, 280 amp hour batteries at the top. We're gonna wire those into a 24 volt configuration because we're using this all-in-one inverter charger from EcoWorthy, and this is a 24 volt inverter. So, um, as far as the batteries are concerned, in order to get 24 volts out of four 12 volt batteries, we're gonna connect two of the batteries in series. And what that means is we connect the negative to the positive of one battery bank, of one pair. And then on the other pair, we connect the negative to the positive. And so now these batteries are 24 volts. And then over here, this battery is also 24 volts. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the positive side from this battery and bring it to the positive side of this battery. And then we're gonna take the negative from the other battery bank and connect it to the negative of this battery. And so now these two 24 volt batteries are, for, are wired in parallel. And so now we'll take the positive from this battery and we'll, I don't know why the, uh, I don't know why my line's so thin here. So that positive goes here and then the negative from this battery goes into the shunt. Sorry for the, I don't know why the lines are being all weird on me. But anyway, so now we have two 12 volt batteries that equal 24 volts, two 12 volt batteries that equal 24 volts, and then we're taking those two 24 volt loads and we are bringing them into our system. So the first thing we're gonna do is when we come in from the batteries into our system, on the positive side, we're gonna hit a fuse. And so it's important that we have a properly sized fuse here so that if anything happens, um, to the wiring or these battery terminals, it will uh, blow the fuse and protect our system, protect our wires. So in this case, we did 150 amp fuse coming in. And then after the fuse, we connect into the on off switch. And that allows us to safely turn the power on and off to all these different components. So if anything happens and we need to work on a system or change out a component, you wanna make sure the power is turned off. And so we'll go through an on-off switch. And then from the on-off switch, we're gonna go, go into 
this distribution box right here. And this has basically four terminals uh, underneath it. And that will distribute all of our 24 volt power. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go out from this distribution block and we're gonna go into a second fuse. And then from this fuse, we're going to go into our inverter. And then additionally, we're gonna go from this distribution block into another fuse holder. And then we're gonna come out. We're gonna go to, into this unit here. And this is the Victron Orion step down converter. And so this is going to take our 24 volt electricity and step it down to 12 volts. And that will run all of our 12 volt circuits like our uh, max fan, our LED strip lights, our water pump. Now you have the option to, and one reason I like 24 volt systems is you do have the option to buy a lot of those components in 24 volt configuration like you can get a 24 volt LEDs 24 volt water pump but this client uh, decided she just wanted to do 12 volt everything so that's what we're going to do so this transformer will get 24 volts in and then the output voltage is 12 and so we're going to send that over to this fused distribution box and then from here we'll have a line for our max fan She's actually doing two max fans. And then additionally, we'll have a line for the water pump. We'll have a line for her water heater. Her water heater is propane, um, but it uses 12 volts to start the ignition system. And then additionally, she has a toilet that'll run off 12 volts and a couple other appliances. And then additionally, off this main distribution block, we're gonna come through another fuse and we're gonna set up a secondary, kind of a smaller fuse block here for any 24 volt devices that she might want to connect to the system. And then uh, that pretty much does it for all the, tw the 24 volt positive loads. So now if we go back to the battery and look at the negative line, we're gonna bring the negative in. The first thing it's gonna do is go to this Victron smart shunt. And the purpose of this smart shunt is to monitor current flow in and out of the battery. And so this will tell you uh, the state of charge of your battery. It'll give you a percentage reading. Uh, the nice thing about the Victron, it has an app, a Bluetooth app you can use. So wherever you're at in the van, you can just pull up the app and see um, what the percentage remaining is of your battery. And then from the shunt, we're going to go directly into the negative distribution bus. And then all these fuse blocks are going to get negative connections as well. And so you definitely want to consider, um, you know, when you're doing your wire, le your wire layout, that you leave enough space between all the components to run the wires in between so that nothing is jammed up. So these are all gonna get negative lines and then the uh, step down converter also gets a negative connection. And then the other thing we have on the board here is this little breaker up top. And this is our solar disconnect breaker and so the positive and negative from the solar panels are going to come in the top. And the purpose of this breaker is twofold. Uh, it'll protect the lines coming in. So uh, if anything happens, it'll prevent the lines from reaching an overcurrent stage and potentially melting or catching on fire. But then additionally, this switch will allow us to kill power to the solar. So again, if you wanna work on this system, uh, you have to not only turn the on off switch to the off position, but also you wanna kill the solar power coming in as well because the solar is another power source. So even with the battery off, the solar can still be bringing in electricity and energizing these components. So the lines will come into the breaker and then from the breaker, they will connect right in here to the all-in-one inverter charger. 
And then the last thing we have up here, this is going to be our breaker panel. So the all-in-one inverter charger has 110 volt output. And so we're gonna use a 10 gauge, three conductor, solid core wire to run into this box. And then from here, we're gonna have breakers inside the box that will connect to all of our 110 volt outlets. And then everything will come out the top and feed to the outlets. Additionally, this eco-worthy all-in-one unit has a shore power input. So we're gonna install a shore power connector on the exterior wall of the shuttle bus. And we're gonna bring that shore power in here to the input, the 110 volt input side. So that'll come something like this and go in here. There we are, I know it's a mess. <laughs> I'm just using this drawing program on my MacBook. It's not the best, but I hope that kind of gives you guys an idea of what each component in the system does and the way that they are connected electrically. And the reason I like these all-in-one inverter chargers is because this one unit takes the place of a charge controller, inverter, and also a shore power charger. So you basically get three different devices all in one. They're small, they're compact, and they're very affordable. This unit was only around $500. And just to give you guys an idea, if you tried to buy all these, oops, <laughs> what am I doing here? If you tried to buy all these units separately, um, you know, you'd probably be spending around $1,000. So it's a pretty good savings to do the all-in-one unit plus it's compact. So let's go ahead and jump into the physics of how we actually wire everything up, cutting, crimping, heat shrinking the wires, and connecting them all together. So the first step, once you have the placement of all your different components laid out, is you wanna go ahead and secure everything down, screw it to the board or your work surface, and then you can start measuring what length wires you need and begin cutting and crimping. So the first cable we're doing is the main battery cable. That's one aught wire. We're gonna use this wire stripper from iCrimp. This is a really easy tool to use and it works for small and large gauge wires. You just gently twist it around the wire and it cuts through that insulation, gives you a nice clean cut and then you're able to just pop the end of the insulation right off. And now you have a nice clean exposed wire and you're ready to slide on the ring terminal. And you wanna go ahead and just give the cable a twist, make sure all the wires are in alignment and you don't have any stragglers on the outside so that when you slide that ring terminal over, it covers all the exposed copper. And then with the ring terminal on, we're gonna use this hydraulic crimping tool by Temco. Uh, this is one of the better quality ones you can get on Amazon. They're about a hundred bucks. Uh, what's nice is they use a hydraulic pump, so you just squeeze the handle. Uh, it's very easy on your hands. It doesn't take a lot of strength or force. It's just kind of a gentle ratcheting motion, and it'll go ahead and just crimp that wire down. And then uh, basically once the wire's fully crimped, you can't crimp it anymore. And so you just go ahead and release the little ratcheting feature and then your ring terminal is going to come right out with a nice crimp on it. And the next thing we're going to do is add heat shrink onto the end of the terminal. You basically want the heat shrink to cover the uh, shaft of the ring terminal and then also go uh, about the same distance down over the wire insulation. And so cut a piece of heat shrink and I have this little uh, heat gun that I picked up on Amazon. It's pretty compact. It works really well. And so we're just going to hold that about an inch away from the heat shrink, let it run. And as it heats up, you'll see the heat shrink start to uh, get smaller and wrap down around the insulation of the wire. And that's something you just kind of run it down until um, you can kind of see the shrink gets a firm grasp around the ring terminal and around the wire insulation and then you know you're all done. And I do recommend using heat shrink on all of these larger battery connections. Um, it just helps hold the ring terminal in place um, and then also it prevents any kind of moisture or water from entering the connection between the ring terminal and the insulation and it prevents any type of you know little piece of wire or something metal from getting in there and potentially causing a disturbance. So heat shrink definitely a good choice. 
And so you're basically just going to repeat that process for every piece of battery cable in the system. You're going to kind of just measure what length of wire you need. You're going to cut it, crimp it, add heat shrink, and just kind of work your way on down through the system. Now each size wire that you're going to use throughout your system is going to be unique depending on your build. There'll be a lot of varying factors such as how many amps each component is drawing, the distance between the components that are getting cable attached to them. So there's really not a way for me to say specifically what size wiring you need for each system. It's going to be something that you're going to have to figure out um, on your own based on your unique design. But I will put a link in the description to explorist.life. They have a wire size calculator that you guys can go ahead and use to determine what size gauge wire you need for each component based on their amp draw and the distance of the cable run itself. And then once all your cable connections are complete, the next step is going to be to go ahead and secure them down. I'm using these eyelet zip ties. And so those are a great, simple, effective way to just kind of secure the wires down so they're not flapping and bumping and they don't. Um, and then there's no potential for anything to get yanked out. So I definitely recommend um, an eyelet zip tie and a screw to kind of hold everything down. And overall, this initial phase of the electrical is probably the most time consuming. It's really not difficult. Uh, the great thing about it is it's all just math. So you can figure out, you know, how much amps each uh, component needs, how long each piece of wire needs to be. And then you just cut and crimp all your cables to size and then attach them down. And so just take your time and work through it. And uh, before you know it, you'll have a full system wired up on your bench ready to go. So here's a look at the finished product for this build out. All the low voltage wiring complete, the 24 volt wiring, as well as the 12 volt wiring that comes out of our Victron step down converter into the 12 volt distribution block. So I hope this helps you guys out. If you're considering doing a 24 volt system for your van or shuttle bus or box truck, um, I think this is a pretty good layout the design is pretty simple. Uh, the amount of components we're using is minimal, but it's going to provide you a really robust power system and give you all the things you need to turn your vehicle into a wonderful tiny home on wheels. Make sure to check the link in the description if you have any questions about the products I use today or any of the websites I mentioned. I'll have everything down in the description, and hopefully that helps you guys out on your own DIY electrical.